What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Moguls. I'm Grant finley Shearis, and today we're talking with Suzanne Mueller. Is that how I pronounce that correctly? Correct. Yes. Um, Relation to Mueller. SVP, Senior Vice President at, of Industry Relations at Realtor.com, which is a subsidiary of Move Inc. Correct. Which is a subsidiary of News Corp. Correct. Um, so for those of you who are new to property tech, whether you're investors or startup founders and you wonder what these big organizations are, why don't you give us a little background as to um, how big Move Inc. is, what companies inside of it, and the connection to News Corp and, and how the whole organization is set up. Well, Move, Move is just basically uh, the ownership part company for Realtor.com and a number of it, the pro software products that also came with Realtor.com when News Corp purchased yeah. the overall, it affected the purchase from Realtors. Why do, so, so what was the original reason why News Corp purchased all that stuff? Well, you know, they'd been in the business for years in Australia with REA, and it made sense. I mean, they're very much about media, online content, and um, it was a very natural strategic step for them. Okay. And discuss some of the, co the companies under moving that are with Realtor.com. Oh, everybody, I'm sure, is very familiar with them. We have Top Producer, we have Five Street, we have uh, List Hub. So all of those are part of the package of Move, Inc. And when you think about other, comp like other services, other technologies that maybe you guys don't have in your portfolio that you're thinking about, because maybe there's, again, there's investors or tech companies watching saying, hey, um, how, what, what's next for the fold of Move Inc.? Do you guys have anything in your mind as stuff you want to incorporate? Well, uh, we just had, uh, went through uh, acquiring a company that it fits a big piece of our strategic puzzle, and that's OpCity, which is a uh, managed services company. So we're able to extend the product we offer um, around leads, and you can get you know, leads at the agent level, and now you can get leads, uh, managed leads, if you will. So you, Extension you, you, of you guys yeah. generate the leads, then you help sift and sort and work them so they're even higher quality and ready to go for right. the agent. Right. Um, and, and then what's the stuff next? Like, what, what's next? Have you guys thought about new ideas? Of what's the next? Oh, sure, we have a ton. You want to well, go after? I think, of course, everybody's looking at product extension in the business, mm -hmm. mortgage, um, all around all of that area. So it's just going to see where, the thing, where it fits with our business model best. Um, right now, we're really fo focused on turning out uh, really high performing tools for agents to continue to decrease pain points and the friction points between them and their clients. Like, we have a great uh, online app we just launched, Realtor.com professional app. Uh, we've just launched a new um, Connections Plus, which allows you to really have an overview of your uh, performance and what's going on with Realtor.com and, and manage your business all online. Uh, it's a dashboard that we're rolling out not just at the agent level but at the broker level and then in the future at the team level. So there's a lot of that sort of, I think it's about right now for us continuing to extend the product but offer the industry and our customers the most transparent view possible of how they're doing and how, how they're performing. Okay. Now, um, everyone looks at Realtor.com and Zillow as the two big portals and is it as much as Coke and Pepsi, like you just kind of like one better than the other, or are there some real differentiators between the two of you? Oh, I think there's some real different uh, core principles there. I mean, we're very much in the business. The whole move at Realtor.com is about helping uh, people f buy, find the home that's right for them, move into the home that's right for them. And, um, but we always are looking at doing it hand in hand with a professional. So again, I talk about decreasing the friction that the consumer goes through when they're looking for a home. So it would make the process easier, the experience more understandable, and helping that connect with a, a, a professional faster mm -hmm. when they're doing that so that the pain points are going away. But that's really, we don't, see ourselves, you know, Zillow right now buys and sells homes and is in They're going a different brokerage. direction yes. and you're going a different one. Yes. Oh, interesting. Very cool. Okay. Um, talk about your role and your story as, as a professional in the space. You've been in real estate for many years and, yes. and talk about your journey and your path and kind of what you do now. 
Um, well, I've been the last four years at Realtor.com. Prior to that, I was uh, in brokerage leadership with the number one uh, Coldwell Banker affiliate, the top uh, Coldwell Banker independent franchise globally. And, um, and I love what I do now. I manage all the relationships with the nationally with the MLSs, uh, the associations. I manage the relationship with the National Association of Realtors because we do have both a legal as well as just a very strong uh, partnership with them. And, um, and manage, you know, sort of the whole industry perspective, branding and preference and, and data for the company. And, and what, what are some of your main metrics and goals for the organization? Is it um, more, more data? Is it more, um, you know, tell me about what are the metrics for you, for your role? You know, obviously we're always looking to continually offer the consumer as much information as possible so that they can move through the search process that much more quickly and connect with the professional that much more quickly. So we right now, the, the beautiful thing about real estate is that we have over a million listings on our website right now and not one of them is the same. They are not cookie cutter, they're very unique, they're very personalized, the search is personalized. So the more information around that property that the consumer can immediately see and be then picking up the phone to call a professional about and connect that more quickly makes it a better process. Very cool. Now, um, the industry is changing. Yes. Um, people are talking about it a lot. Now, the direction it may change, people don't quite know. People are talking about agents going away or having a much less of a market to work out of because I buyers and open yeah. door and all that stuff. Um, but who knows? But some people think, no, no, agents will be around doing the exact same thing. It's just other technologies are being built. Some people are talking about brokerages um, really being disrupted. Um, and then now the MLSs have to figure out if they're going to consolidate, how they're going to consolidate, or is someone else going to be able to find a way to just um, disrupt even that whole model. And you guys are affected by all that. So when you think about what's likely to happen and what you now have to think about and how that affects your role and how that affects you know, Realtor.com and Move Inc., what is on your mind for the future of the industry? Well, I, I, let's go back to what I just said. I mean, there's no single listing that this is the same. It's really, you can't really commoditize the process for a couple of reasons. Each home is unique. The, experience of finding a home is so personalized and there has been years of real estate professionals building up one-on-one -on -one relationships with clients to help them through that process it's highly emotional it's highly charged um, so i don't see the role of the professional going away anytime soon and they bring a ton of value to the process like the value of did the school levy pass is there one coming up What's going, is there a water main going in? What's going on in the, municip the municipality around the property? What was the builder like who did this 14 years ago who's no longer in business? So they bring so much knowledge, hyper, but it's the personal touch that can never be replaced. So do I see things changing? Absolutely. I see um, brokerages having to be far more focused on their ROI. Um, you know, the recent RESPA, what's happened with RESPA and things like uh, different um, things throughout the industry has really um, begun to impact their margins. So they have to be really smart about the tools and technology they offer and to make sure what they're really offering is absolutely making their agents more productive. And that's the business we're in, is we want the business to succeed. We want professionals, brokers to be more productive, to be build their business, because then you know we all grow together, all boats rise together. Mm -hmm. So do I see some of those business practices changing in that perspective? Absolutely. Is, um, Instant offers going to become one of the choices that brokers are potentially offering, helping their agents to offer. I think that will be coming. I think we can see that. It's a choice of convenience. Uh, do I see uh, tools and technology coming that just make the whole communication process and working together more transparent between the agent and their client? Absolutely. Do I hope that we're providing that, and do we plan to be, you know, in that space mm -hmm. assisting mm -hmm. that? Yes. Very good. So, one of the things you mentioned about 
what an agent is able to do right now to add more value to the, the seller was knowing about the schools, knowing about the transportation, knowing about the building permits, knowing about the people that used to work there or live there and all that stuff. That is essentially data. Now, getting, a getting access to that data, that is now the chance. So I have a, a local company and I do see the value of agents and w but, but I definitely see technology and data being able to assist them in being smarter at, the f at their fingertips. And knowing all that information, I mean, your brain can only hold so much at a time. When you guys think about getting better data, not just about the home, but about the neighborhood, which is what you're talking about, right. really, um, what m progress have you guys made or what challenges do you have when it comes to getting more data about the neighborhood and about the homes um, because that's something that uh, I know a lot of companies want. They want more data, not just about the home, but about the whole neighborhood to be able to educate the buyer and seller about where to move and then based on w where you've chosen, what that, what that price, because if there's a new transit line coming in, that house is actually worth more. Um, but people aren't showing that on listings right now. Well, and that's something that, to your point, it, it, it might be coming in or it might be under vote. Like, so if it hasn't even been voted on yet, the data is not available. It's the people who are living in the communities who f have their finger on the pulse of what's happening, of the news, of the breaking news. Um, and I think that's what's really impactful and what they bring to the stage. And, and think about it, though, that, you know, everybody talks about data. It gets thrown around a lot in this industry, but it is, you know, you need to break it down into very, uh, to pieces. I mean, sure, there's the data around the listing and there's the data around the neighborhood, which you know can be user-generated content. But then there's also the data of the insights of what we see um, happening on uh, Realtor.com, how many times somebody has looked at the house, how many times uh, the open house uh, segment has been looked at. That, you know, how many, if we could see um, how many times the uh, agent's been reached out to on it. So, that, so there's insight data, and then, there, and then there's, you know, so how do we leverage that? How do we work with that in the professional to make, the, again, everything smoother, faster for our customers to, to be knowledgeable about that? And is that something you guys are doing right now, or is that something that you hope to be able to do in the future, is, is to be able to provide, like, is, is what you just mentioned right there a future yes. vision that you want to have, or something that you're it's, doing right now? We're working. Very cool. And is that something that you guys do internally or is that something that, hey, if there's a smart tech owner or founder out there who can help yeah. you guys do yeah. that, is that something that you actually look to the ecosystem to help you with? Every, you know, every company has to evaluate that. There's always on-the-shelf options and there's always internal capabilities. I mean, we have tremendous uh, pr product people, engineering people, incredibly skilled and talented, and it always has to be uh, like an ROI between is it easier to onboard that yeah, what is and that bring it from outside? Process to build versus yes. buy? It's very unique depending on what challenge we're looking at, what opportunity, and where it fits in the strategic plan. Okay. Um, now, talk about um, how has you know your role changed? Like, is, is is your role changed because of the industry, or is that you've been brought on by Move by Realtor.com and Move? to do this very specific thing? Um, or is it, is it changing because of the industry? And then, like a startup, you're now having to adapt as a person in the organization. Oh, gosh. Um, it is a very entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial environment. It's very creative. Uh, part, my role is actually uh, evolving in that I'm uh, not just educating people, managing relationships, talking to them about data and where data is going, but also about what we're doing, like I'm doing right here, right now, as well as um, sharing, being that you know pipeline, that communication back to the company about what's going on, what the pulse points are, what the emotional um, temperature is, how the industry is feeling, and what the hot points are, you know, what the topics are that people are considering and looking at. So because you know one of the things as like a the startup side, the younger company side, you know, we always talk about being agile and nimble. Yes. Right, and the bigger companies are not able to move as fast. But something I've noticed is that, you know, really good big companies, they are able to move pretty quickly um, in some directions, perhaps. 
So um, have you started to notice that now working in a company like Move, that here is where we are really fast and nimble, and here is, yeah, because of the structure of the organization, we're a public company, blah, blah, we are, we're not able to move as fast in that direction. Have you seen like the, the ways that you are fast and the ways that you are not? Um, I guess I don't see it as because we're now part of a larger organization that we're in any way restricted. I think we're really still very uh, nimble. There's still, you know, it's an older company. Realtor.com has been around for over 20 years. So mm -hmm. we have, um, it, there's, when you have that, there's the blessing of the knowledge base, the institutional knowledge, et cetera. And then there's also the legacy code. And you're always looking to evolve and update and, and bring it, because there's parts that are really valuable and unique, and there's parts that, you know, need improvement or just need to be completely replaced. So it's, it's always easier to be really small and five people building something entirely new mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. having a really successful, exciting uh, company, but that has a lot of parts and pieces to it that sort of all need to be moved together. Mm -hmm. Either it's a dynamic ecosystem. So, but I think people, I think more importantly, they th we think very nimbly and there are things we are doing very quickly in response to what we're seeing in terms of what customers want, what consumers want online, and that all is definitely being recognized. Because I know, you know, investors and, and people in the tech ecosystem, they look at the big players and they go, hey, what's our opportunity to get in to provide value to the marketplace? Um, investor goes, hey, what's the next technology that we should be investing in that either that company will have a place to be able to join that, that is as big as move.com or they'll be able to do something that you guys aren't able to do and then you go, I'm so happy you did that and we're big enough that we can now bring you into the fold like you did with Resio and Five Street or and th those companies, right? Mm -hmm. So. Imagine talking to an investor right now who wants to get invest in the real estate property space. What are some of the technologies and what are some of the services that you think are hot and are going to be winners and something that, that if they start putting their funds towards, it's going to move the industry forward? You know, I don't think it's any one technology. I think you have to flip it around. That's like saying, what's your favorite tool? Um, do you like the leveler or the immediate, you know, laser measure or whatever? Yeah. Um, I think it's more about what's the pain points again. And it really has to do with um, what is what is the consumer really looking for? It's an, you know, interactive experience. Quite frankly, I think, you know, anything that increases communication or a sense of being closer to the professional during the process and having that support mm -hmm. is a need. And anything that, who knows what's going to be coming, but anything that actually provides that need makes them uh, able to get the information to their clients more quickly, share their information more quickly, be more um, responsive. That's, gonna, that's what's going to succeed. How about connecting the agent to other services so that maybe they can make money in other ways? Because if an agent could make money in other ways, then maybe they don't have to charge so much on the transaction and their income would actually be the same. Is that something that you guys have ever thought about? Because you talked about more, maybe in the future you bring mortgage into the fold and maybe insurance. Like there's all these services that are ancillary a part. Yeah, yeah, there's all these ancillary services that are a part of the process. Right. Um, and right now, you know, the agent, you know, doesn't make any money off it. Now, I know there's some laws around it, yeah. but there's also a, sh a change in the way the ecosystem is running so that they actually can legally make money off those services so that maybe they can actually not charge so much to sell a home. Is that something that you guys have ever thought about when you think about how to move, you know, the industry forward? Um. Yes and no. I mean, there already are a lot of examples of that out there that have been done uh, where mortgage companies work with agents in terms of marketing and there's MSAs, brokerages have marketing service agreements. Yeah, brokerages usually have different groups that they and, make money off um, of. You know, successful agents are already doing that where they have sort of marketing service agreements with mortgage brokers that they work with. Um, but you're right, RESPA has made that really challenging on a lot of levels because there were some abuses of the system that, um, mm -hmm. you know, obviously have been addressed. And people just need to be fully informed of the services they're going to use and, and they want to know that they're getting the best possible. So, um, we, you know, I think we are looking at it and there's obviously some out there that already exist. Uh, you never know. Yeah. 
Now, being on the brokerage side, and now being on the vendor side, where, where now your focus is on the agent right. and making the agent successful. Agents, brokers, yes. What do you think about that, that brokerage business model? Because you can now maybe have some, uh, a new vantage point to look at that industry and their value proposition and how they should change so that they provide value to the agent and to the homeowner so that they deserve you know, to be in the middle. Is there any um, yeah, well, thoughts think, you have you know, on their model? Back, yeah, I think it goes back to what I said earlier is that, you know, uh, the broker owners, broker owners and it need to really be business managers, business leaders. And it's not that they're not now, but it means that they're going to have to be looking even more, t you know, closely at their ROI, which includes in transparency into what's really happening in their brokerages and where the, um, the, return is coming from and be that you know I think in the past one of the things we certainly did at my previous brokerage is we thought we were being successful and we had a good ROI when we saw a high adoption of a tool that we provided to uh, agents and our you know our uh, brokers but the reality is maybe it's not adoption because maybe it's being adopted by those who aren't your top producers. So how do you, so I think there needs to be a shift in evaluation of, you know, what am I offering? What is its return to the broker as well as the agent? Mm -hmm. and, and looking at the different measurabilities uh, perspective around that. So it, it is, and that's why, that's the other thing, like offering, being able to offer more. Instant offers are not, New, the East Coast, there were brokerages on the East Coast who were doing it years ago. It's sort of mm -hmm. a guarantee. So, okay, now how do we work that into what we put out in front of people um, when they're sitting at the listing presentation th that then allows us to compete rather than lose the listing? Does the broker take on the financial li liability with that? The way the offers, you know, 20 years were set up? Does, are they partnering with somebody? I think that's something that we're going to be seeing or people are definitely going to be exploring. But those are the smart broker owners, right? They're thinking ahead. They're mm -hmm. thinking forward about, okay, this is what's happening. This is a, a, what's being presented. And they've been hearing, oh, it used to be, we'll go in, um, I've met with, I'm coming up with just big brands right now. Coldwell mm -hmm. Banker, I've met with Keller Williams, um, I've met with local, uh, the local brokerage, yeah, independent, yeah. Uh, and I meet with them on Monday and you'll know Tuesday. And now there's, what they're hearing is, oh, I've met with you, and I hear from the instant offer company, pick one, who knows. Yeah, open door, yeah. And I'll let you know on Monday. They're not doing the whole agent search again, like three agents necessarily. If they're in that target for instant offers, they've got an agent and they're waiting to hear about an instant offer and those are their only two choices. Mm -hmm. So it makes total sense for the broker to say, okay, we can do an instant offer. Let's figure that out. But again, so it's about expanding the product that they, they can help their agents uh, offer, making sure they have the tools that make them most effective, really deciding what they want to measure in terms of productivity and ROI, and then watching those margins really closely. Now, this is definitely to your advantage because of real the, the, the sociology of, of who, what sites do people go to to search for homes? Yeah. Zillow and Realtor.com. Those are the big two. Yeah. And I guess Redfin is now up there, Good. sort of. Redfin? Or not? Yeah. <laughs> So, so, um, so you got, you got, you got, you got, you two. Now, IDX and real estate agents having their own websites, they were like, hey, no, you don't need, you don't need to go to Realtor. I mean, this is what agents say. You don't need to go to Realtor.com. I have all the listings on my website. You can just go to my website. You can search for homes. And I can, in my head, generate some leads of people who are searching for homes. Now, that really hasn't taken off that big compared to Zillow and Realtor.com. You guys are where all the traffic goes. Mm -hmm. So when I think about iBuyers mm -hmm. and brokerages having their own little iBuyer, mm -hmm. I wonder if, the, if it'll be the same thing as IDX websites. Sure, you, you all can have iBuyers, but everyone's going to go to one or two players or three. 
Uh, you know, it's a potential. I just don't, um, we're not interested in getting in the business of writing offers or transaction, closing transactions, doing transaction paperwork, or uh, that isn't something Realtor.com is interested in. Obviously, some other portals might be yeah, involved yeah, in yeah. that, but um, it could be. I mean, it, but then again, there's a lot of writs and a lot of investor pools that are out there, and I don't know. I, I don't see it necessarily rolling up to a duopoly but you know, right right absolutely an option well that is good i mean that really says that you guys are super agent focused because if that's if you're not going to get into that space mm -hmm. then that means you're just trying to do stuff for the agent mm -hmm. that's good mm -hmm. um how can people get in touch with you if they want to get in touch with you learn more from you get to know you and work somehow work with the move at, oh suzanne mueller suzanne.mueller at realtor.com Feel free to email, or uh, I'm on Facebook, and I have all of my I have my profile with all of my social media channels you can use to get in touch with me. So cool. Yeah. Well, hey, as always, subscribe to the show if you haven't already, so you can learn more from real estate moguls like Suzanne. Thank you so much. Thanks, Grant. For being on the show, um, that was really great. I hope you guys learned a ton from this veteran in the industry.